Good morning, everybody. Oh, you know what? This is going to be real loud. <laughs> I caught it before. Okay. How's everybody? Everybody's having a good morning so far. It's a Monday. That's a Monday, Monday, Monday for sure. I um, hope everybody had a great weekend. Today we're going to kind of get ready for Halloween. It's tomorrow. Can you believe it? We've done 31 days. That's crazy. Uh, today we're going to create a little sign. And I apologize. I don't know where I got this cutter from. Um, I could probably do some digging to figure it out. Um, but it's just a plaque that has, uh, it's two plaques, basically. This is what it is. It's supposed to be two. And I think it's meant for like a wedding. So you could put like balloons, like a balloon arch and then write something here. Um, I can't, I can't remember where I got it from. You know, it's shocking, right? Um, so we're going to use that today to create uh, a little Halloween sign. I was trying to see because like, I can't really tell that it's purple, but oh well. All right. So I did some purple and white stripes. Uh, I'm going to also go ahead and do the ghost that I didn't do on Saturday. Um, since we took a look back and I didn't get the ghost done, I do want to get it done. So it's also in the same purple lavender color. Um, I don't know why I'm on here. Hang on. Give me just a second. Here we go. I was in the wrong channel. Um, so we're going to do both of those today because they're pretty easy to um, to do. I don't know if this one's dry enough. We'll see. We'll see. I, you know, I some have started to Jan and I, I cannot stress enough how much I know most of us cookiers, how much we love that because while I have a few cutters that I know the minute I look at them, oh yeah, I got that from Sweet Design Chopper. Oh yeah, I got that from Kaleida Cuts. Um, now, since there's so many different cut, you know, like cookie cutter places that I buy from, yeah, it would be nice to have some sort of like little, but I know that some of them have started with that. Um, so yeah, um, but I, you could probably search it up on Etsy for like a wedding plaque or balloon plaque. I'm pretty sure it was meant for a balloon, like a balloon banner garland thing. So, all right. Um, so we're going to do the happy Halloween sign and then the little ghost. Both are pretty easy. And for the happy Halloween sign, I'm not going to do balloons on it um, this time. I'm going to do some flowers and some of some other stuff that I've made over the course of the month so that I can use it. Right. So I have some flowers. I'm going to push this up a little bit. So I have some flowers that we made in my little holiday three month little club that I have going on. And I just made some of them are black. So they're going to be kind of hard to see against this black table. Some of these are hand piped. Like those are all hand piped and I just did them in white and then you can paint them. This one was done with uh, edible clay put into a mold and then popped out. Um, this one was also hand piped. Again, I just tried to find some flowers that were a little bit bigger and um, I just hand painted them. They were all white before. Um, so then I have Billy Balls, which Barefoot Baker has a tutorial on these. I love these. They're some of my favorite things. So I had quite a few left. So I figured I could throw those in here and there. Um, some eyeballs because it's Halloween. Uh, happy Halloween. Friend should have some eyeballs somewhere. So figured I could use those. And then I also made some bats to do with the um, van that we did right at the very beginning of October. So I have some little bats. So I figured I could use those as well to just fill in this space here. Um, I'm going to write happy Halloween first and then proceed to fill the space. It will be a little bit easier to do it that way. <laughs> All right. Um, I've got paper towels. All right. So 
we're going to write happy Halloween. And this was originally what I had so that we can, like we've been looking at, and it just flipped around. And when I traced this, I must have traced it. I usually trace my cutters upside down so that I don't get any pencil mark or marker marks on the cutting edge of the cutter. I get it on the top edge, which it gets washed, but you know, just in case. So I have like some script and then just handwriting. I also, or just some prints, I also had done or looked at like you could do it the opposite where you have script writing at the bottom for Halloween and then happy kind of hidden over here. I kind of like this one a little bit better um, just because obviously when I look at it now, this is flipped, right? So it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> so I think we'll probably work with this one or I'll work with that, that one then. Um, no. I think we can make it work. And I'm going to try to fit it all along here. Um, you could scoot it up a little bit if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to put it all the way down to the edge. I am going to scoot it just a little bit up, but I'm going to try to kind of keep it in this area so that I can just fill right here and then we can kind of go around like that. And I think, I think I'm going to do black. We're going to hope that I have enough. I think I do. I may have to change out. So I'm going to use detail glaze to do the writing and then um, try to, I might have to rebag. I may not be able to, I may not have enough. I may not have So I'm just going to write, I'm going to take a look at it real quick and we're going to go for it. Normally I would use a projector for this. Um, we've kind of talked about this before, but We're going to just cross our fingers and hope that it, and it doesn't have to be exactly like what the picture, this is just to kind of help my brain kind of start to see how to do it. About this point is where you kind of start to get a little nervous because you're like, I don't know if it's going to fit. So we're going to try to make it fit. Normally it does just fine. So Halloween, and then I'm going to write happy up here. And this one, I'm probably going to have to go a little bit smaller, uh, thinner together on, or else it won't fit. So, oh, I should have done it down at the bottom. I should have done it down at the bottom. And you could definitely go back if you wanted to and thicken these up. Um, I could have made I think make a lot smaller cut and then um, thicken those letters up a little bit if I wanted to. You can go back and do that at this point in time. Um, with words like Halloween, I do feel like they get a bit, sorry for my dog work. Um, I do feel like they get a little too congested if you don't have a big enough plaque to really accommodate for that whole word. So in this situation, I don't feel like if I go back in and thicken up those letters, um, kind of like they did, you know, you see the downstrokes are thicker. I don't feel like if I go back in and do that here, I don't think that it's going to look good. It's going to be harder to read. Um, so I just kind of err on the side of you know, maybe not being making it so congested. And I'm just going to kind of pull out those L's a little bit. Okay. This L for some reason on camera looks worse than it really is. That's so weird. Okay. So now we're going to stick on our little things. Normally I would do like, I would do this part when it's dry because then you're able to kind of arrange it better. Um, but just being able to take it off and put it back on and rearrange them. So normally I would do it dry, but 
we'll figure it out. And I may not use all of these. Again, I just had them. So I thought, you know what, we're going to paint them to kind of match. And then we'll just use them accordingly, right? The bigger flowers might be, that, that big sunflower might be too big. Probably put that one down there. It's just a game of, where do you want to stick it? Where does it fit? Okay, I think I'll do that one there. And at this point in time, I'm just going to go ahead and stick them on and just, you know, cross your fingers that they work. You could have also rearranged this um, on the paper if you wanted to. Um, just going to go for it. I have a bunch of the billy balls that are in all different sizes so that I, I know I can squeeze some in these spaces. So I'm not too, you know, concerned with that. I think oh, that's too much. I think I'm going to put that one there. And then I do think I might use the sunflower right there. Yeah, we'll do that. And I flooded this this morning, so it is still fairly wet. Um, it's still really shiny. So it's definitely something I'm going to use. On. Okay, so now I'm going to stick in some of these billy balls and eyeballs and maybe the bat. And I think I'll maybe do the bat yeah, over there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of, I just put a little bit of icing on the body and then I'm just going to carefully, you can kind of wiggle it to, you know, if you kind of wiggle it back and forth, it will. And then like usually the humidity in your house and just the fact that it's still fairly wet icing will grab onto all the other stuff, uh, the wings and everything. So if you, if you don't want to chance it, you can always put icing on the back of those wings too. All right, so let's put an eyeball uh, right here. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. And then I'm just going to try, I'm just going to kind of put some of these. And you could use a, a pair of tweezers if you wanted to. That would work as well but i'm just going to start to kind of put some of these around this is super fun i really want to put an eyeball right there but it's kind of covering up the happy halloween so we'll have to not Let's see if i can find my other tweezers is that a no I guess that's a no. Okay, so I'm going to put, mm, I'll put a purple, but yeah, I'll put purple. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through, I like all the different textures on the Billy Balls because you can use all sorts of different sprinkles. So I like having all the different textures. Now let's do some purple ones over here. Um, I'll we'll put that one there and then I'm going to take some purple ones and kind of stick them hopefully up underneath of there. Mm. I'm going to stick that one right there. Yeah, I want to put one right there. Let's do an orange one. Do I have a little orange one? Yeah. Just kind of, just a bunch of, it's just like flower arranging. Just like flower arranging. Um, let's see what else. I don't know if I can fit 
No, I don't think I could. I should have shoved it in there, that one. Maybe an eyeball. I still think there needs to be an eyeball down here at the bottom, so we're going to stick it in there. Still think I had needed it. It just needed that. Just had to have that right there. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of torn on this area here. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe just move this one a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll see. I think if anything, I'd have to take this one off and then put this one on there. We'll see if it works. As long as you're covering up other things, you should be fine with taking them off. Let's see. I don't know what I just... Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. All right. So just just a pretty simple Happy Halloween little sign. Something to kind of use up some of the little transfers that maybe had left over. Could definitely throw another bat on there if you wanted to. Um, definitely doable. But just kind of a way to use up some of those transfers before the season is over with. And I don't have to worry about craters. So you guys know we've talked about a lot of, you know, a lot of the days we've talked about craters. And when you have these transfers, I don't have to worry about craters at all. <laughs> you haven't. So uh, Barefoot Baker, a uh, bear like our bear, Barefoot Baker, um, she has a bunch of tutorials and a bunch of transfer sheets that you can print off. And one of them is, I think they're called Billy Balls. And she goes through how to do them. She has different, she has like small, medium, and large printouts that you can print out. And I just usually will make a whole bunch for each season. So like with Christmas coming up, I'll make a whole bunch of red sanding sugar, red nonpareil, white sanding sugar, white nonpareil, green sanding sugar, green on pearls, um, pink, all the gumdrop colors. I'll just make a bunch of those because they're just easy to throw on. We threw them on the bus, the, v, the, the Volkswagen bus at the beginning of the uh, 31 days of Halloween. Um, they're great in flower arrangements. Um, I think I use them, Jan, in the, the club this last month when we were doing the plaques and stuff. Those are those same. They're basically just a dot of icing with sanding sugar or non pearls put on top and then you let those dry and you just pull them off and they create you know they just create these little dots that have texture and you can make them in all different sizes and then you could just have them ready to use um, i like using them because they do create kind of they they are like making a dot but they don't have the chance of cratering so I love that. I know they're so cute. I use them all the time. I think I've used them for so many years. Um, so I, I think they're great. Um, the one thing I will say with this one that I would do once it's dry is I would take my orange um, marker from Sinful Cutters and I would take the really fine point that's in camera right now. Um, this point, this point, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. It's really fine. And I would go through and I would put some dots in between each of those purple lines. It just would kind of help draw the orange and purple and black all together. Okay. But that turned out really cute. Love it for just a sign. Just kind of something different to round out our, you know, we have two other signs, the trick or treat and the spooky vibes. So we've had quite a few word cookies, but just this one's a good one to end on the since it's almost Halloween. All right, so this cutter is a little ghost. She looks like this. Um, she's my creation. I drew her, and this cutter is at 3T Bakery if you want it. It's online. It's really a cute cutter. Um, 
it's adapted from a clip art that I saw that I purchased. And then I kind of, I kind of messed with it a little bit so that it would be a little bit more cookie cutter friendly. So I'm going to outline uh, on this one. Let me leave it here for just a second. Okay. I got already. Um, can you see it sat next to another cookie? <laughs> All the butter leaking into that. Um, all right, so on this cookie, I want to kind of create some of these folds in her her ghostly outfit. So I'm going to be using a pink detail glaze, and I like using some other color other than white. So you could use like a light gray if you wanted to. You could use a black. Um, I used a light blue on one one time. You could use any color. I just like to use a little bit lighter shade of something other than white so that you can start to see that. Um, so I'm going to outline her like upper body first because that's, that's, well, that's not what I wanted to happen, but that's all right. You know. Live TV, right? Okay, fix that. So then I'm going to just kind of follow my uh, picture here and just kind of create these folds in her, her little sheet. And they don't necessarily have to be perfect. They're, you know, all different folds. She doesn't, all ghosts are different. I mean, all the things that you want to say. We're just going to try to make her look like she's actually floating at this point in time. Okay, and then I want to go back over the lines that are going to be in between each of these little sections of folds. So I'm just basically stacking a line on top of the line that's already there. Doing this so that A, I can see it, because your icing would normally just flood over top of those lines. So this way I'm able to still see that line down the middle and the icing won't flood over, okay? You can also take and pull these to a point if you want to. Um, you, I usually try to pull them to a point also after I get it flooded just so that they don't look so harsh and they look a little bit more like a fold, like it just gradually disappears into the actual base of the fabric. And then I'm just going to even out some of these lines because the icing, you know, kind of gets blobby. I don't want it to be blobby. I want it to look like it's all flowing and it was all one, one thing. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and pipe in her eyes. You don't have to do this. Um, I'm going to pipe her eyes here, and then I'm going to, when I start to flood, I'm not going to flood those with white. And then I'm going to come back and do those a little bit later. Um, but you guys can, you guys get the gist of, you know, doing that, of flooding them this way, and then going back in and flooding them black. I like to do eyes this way when, especially with ghost or anything that has like a solid, like solid black eye. Um, I like to do that because I, I'm able to get the icing pretty rounded in that once this white dries, I can go back in with that black and make it pretty tall. So they have a little bit of dimension. All right. So now we're going to flood this ghost and I want to make sure that I have my scribe ready and I'm going to go with the top first and then I'll start working on her folds, okay? 
So I'm going to turn her upside down because it's always a little bit easier to flood this way. To be totally honest, you're not going to see that pink up here, uh, the outline, you're not going to see it because of the fact that you're going to flood over it and it's not really going to be able to be seen. So I'm going to work this to even it out a little bit because it was kind of squared off because that bag kind of popped a little bit. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to give her some cheeks that are the color. So that's why I liked using the pink because I was going to use it anyway for cheeks. So we're just going to go ahead and flatten those out. Okay, give her some cheeks. Now we get to work on the folds. And I could go ahead and flood down a little bit more if I wanted to. You do have to work, uh, not fast, but you do have to work, you know, fast enough that your lines in between where you stopped flooding and you started disappear. If you don't work fast enough, then you can do what I just did there, which was just kind of work the line and it will sink back into each other. So with this one, I'm going to go up to the lines and then I'm going to use my scribe to kind of pull out this corner and pull this into the main body area. Okay. You can always add more icing if you want to. And then I'm going to come over here. I can go right up to that line. That's fine. But over here, when I'm getting close to this one, I'm not going to go right up to it. I'm just going to put some close to it, work everything else. So work out these points. Work this. Well, there's a big O plane flying by. Holy cow. And then I'm just going to use my scribe to kind of pull this icing to just have it touch that line. I'm, I don't really want it to go any farther than that. If you pull too much, it's going to just touch each. Once that glaze touches that other side of the glaze, there's no stopping it, right? We just know that it just happens like that. So I try really hard to avoid that happening. Okay. The more you let these folds dry, so if I, I would let these dry a little bit more, but it works out just fine, I find, even when they're like this, especially since it's detail glaze. I'm just going to work on this. I work usually pulling it onto that one side and then flood the other side. So this side, I'm just going to barely pull it so that it will touch the line and then back off. And again, I'm just working so that, so like I'll flood up to this line, flood, 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 don't touch that line, okay? Fix everything else so that it somewhat covers that pink outline. I don't really care if you see the pink outline, it's all right, it matches her cheeks, it looks like it's a shadow. Um, that's why I, I like pink the best it tends to look the most like a shadow. The blue also worked if it's like a really light blue. All right, so I'm gonna work on this one. And this is where you start to get into, like this side is starting to crust over right here. So I really have to kind of, kind of convince it to, hey, you don't need to, you need to kind of help accept that or else you're gonna see that line in between where your two icings met. All right, so now this one, I can't touch either line because both sides are flooded. So I just want to get some icing in there, work it down here, work it over here and down here, and then just barely touch it. Barely touch it. And then make sure that it's kind of accepting of it up here. And then you have this sweet little ghost looking folds. If you want to cover up some of the folds because maybe they're all equal or you want to do, you can definitely put some icing in areas to cover up some of those folds 
to make them a little bit different heights if you wanted to. You can definitely do that. I just wanted to have some of it showing some motion. And I feel like doing it that way with the double line definitely helps with that without having to, I mean, there's really hard other ways to do it without having definite lines of where you stop working for a few hours, right? But isn't she cute? I just, I love this little cutter. I was so happy with it. So, so cute. All right, so then you can go back in. I don't know what I did. I have all these clips, and now I don't know where they went. Um, anyway, so now you can go back in. Maybe I'll try to go back in with detail glaze. We'll do some detail glaze for the eyes because that should stick up above. So we'll do some detail. Oh, party foul. Okay. That doesn't happen to anybody else, does it? <laughs> so I had a little piece of black icing fall into that. I just kind of pushed it down. It's always easier to push it down than it is to try to dig it out. So I just tried to push it down and then I just kind of took some other white icing and covered it up. Um, when icing is wet like that, I find it is really hard to dig out without just totally destroying what you're working on. All right. Oh yeah, that works so cute. All right. And she has a little smile on her face. I'm going to do that with marker later. I'm not going to do that right now because my bag is cut way too thick and it will just be a really thick smile. And I'm not really looking for that. I really want a little thin smile. I am going to give her some highlights in her eyes, though. Just a little dot of white. You could give her some eyebrows if her eyelashes if you wanted to. Um, I just like that she looks like she's like floating. She's so cute. And if I had a thinner cut bag, I would definitely do. You could do the black uh, mouth if you had a thinner cut bag. I just know it's going to look a little thick and it's not going to look cute. But that's our little ghost that we didn't get done on Saturday. So I definitely wanted to get it done tomorrow. It's Halloween. Can you believe it? Uh, tomorrow we're going to do the bat that we're supposed to do on Sunday, but I didn't get to it. Um, and then we're going to do the spider web because I love spider webs. I know they're super simple, but they are one of my favorites to do because I just love wet on wet techniques. Um, they just make a cookie just come together so quickly. So I can't help but do one. So we did our ghost today. She's floating away. And we did our sweet little happy Halloween sign getting us ready for tomorrow. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Monday. Happy Hallows Eve, and I'll see you tomorrow on Halloween. Bye, guys.